Hey and welcome, I'm Hammy, I'm back from Los Angeles now after visiting Blizzard to learn all about Overwatch Archives Retribution and there have been a few little reveals since I've been on a plane. So I'm quickly rounding up everything that's been going on, the skins, the teasers we've seen, the Overwatch dossiers that we were given in LA, Jeff's Overwatch League announced with all of the main Retribution news and a few other bits too, so time codes in the description below if you'd like to skip. First up, two new skins, we have Scion Hanzo and Blackwatch Mora. Now Scion Hanzo looking very dapper, maybe doing a little bit of business on behalf of the Shimada clan, who knows, or maybe it's just a formal skin version for him. But we have Hanzo looking pretty dapper with his nice little watch there. I'm sure a lot of Hanzo fans are going to be very very pleased with this one. And then of course as expected from the Blackwatch Moira outfit that we've seen coming up in Retribution from the teaser trailer we have Moira's Blackwatch skin looking very very cool with that beret. I personally really like it. What do you think of these two skins and what other skins would you like to see? I have had the privilege of seeing what skins are coming and I think people are going to be pretty happy. Next up we had another event teaser as to the plot of Retribution with this Twitter teaser of Reyes presumably being interviewed after the operation had taken place. We followed the original plan and infiltrated the manor. From there, I evaluated the situation and made my decision. And I stand by it. When you're on operation, things don't always go according to plan. So a nice little lawn nugget there in that Reyes was 50 at the time of Retribution. I quite like that, maybe it puts him at 58 or so depending on how long you think has taken place between the events of the museum and recall trailers and kind of the current day in Overwatch timeline. It makes him at least 58 in current day. If of course, normal aging even applies to the ghostly wraith-like form that is Reaper anymore. That's a little lore nerd point that I enjoy. The real thing is, what decision did Reyes make on this mission that he's sticking by? And when things don't always go according to plan on mission, what didn't go according to plan in Retribution? Well, we're going to find out next Tuesday. Not long to wait. Apologies for the slight shaky cam. This was me in the audience the other night, but Jeff Kaplan jumped on the Overwatch League stage amid some games to reveal more about Overwatch Retribution. There is an amazing trailer that I'm showing you parts of. You should absolutely check out if you've not seen it already. But we discover that Reyes is perhaps in a questioning room or interviewing room and Morrison is interviewing him about this mission that went awry and we see a few little snippets of what actually happened in that mission. It is going to be Rialto um, in Venice, Italy, the location following up from the Retribution comic that I reviewed and summarised. Do take a look at that video if you haven't already. The Blackwatch squad are going into Rialto, Italy in order to attempt to try and deal with Antonio, this figure that Overwatch believe is responsible for attacking their Oslo facility and also the recent attack we saw in the comic on their Rome facility as well. The members participating in this mission, Gabriel Reyes, McCree, Moira and Genji, and is of course a four player co-op against AI. You get to face Talon, there are special units that were highlighted and that Jeff actually described on the stream, such as the assassin, we saw uh, Genji I think saying, or Moira saying, someone take out that assassin, also a sniper unit, a heavy assault, as well as special Talon sort of grunt units as well, and all of these have different special abilities. Now, I think it's going to be okay to say that because we've come out to Blizzard to have a look at this, we've played this, I can't talk about playing it until next week when the event is out, but I had a great time. I think that's fair enough to say. I had an absolutely great time. I'm sure you guys are going to have a great time too. Now, returning like Uprising, there is an all heroes mode. You can do this in as well. I had a lot of fun playing as a couple of different heroes. Uh, Brigitte was a lot of fun. I can't say any more than that. Uh, there are going to be four difficulties, of course, and then also what would an Overwatch event be without a little bit of extra loot? Now, there are new loot box items, of course, coming on the stage. Jeff decided to reveal that there is a Soldier 24 skin coming for Reyes or Reaper, showing what he was like in the Soldier Enhancement program. Now, the eagle-eyed lore watchers amongst you might remember that there's a Soldier 24 folder in the Oasis spawn rooms. I believe it's University. So there you go, more having a little look at Soldier 24 and things in the past previously. So a really awesome reveal. Okay, a couple of other bits. Well, the Blackwatch Archive. Now, you may have seen me share on Instagram the other day a picture of this little Blackwatch dossier. I can now show you what's inside. We get a little personal detail file on Antonio Bartolotti, of course, the figure that we see as being held responsible for the various Overwatch attacks. So a little bit of information about him there. You see a little blanked out name there, but we obviously know that Viali is the Talon council member that Doomfist presumably disposed of in the events of Masquerade. We then have a little memorandum. It's kind of like a review. Uh, subject unsanctioned operation in blank um, talking about blank agents carrying out things in, in Venice Italy uh, resulting in the death of an unknown member of talent operatives along with something 
who knows what. Uh, it talks about background and mission report. There's a lot of it blanked out. Now, one thing I should say is that these Blackwatch archives that we've been given, if we attended uh, this Blizzard event uh, that I'm just about to fly home from, we're given to a few people. So it may be worth uh, trying to have a look at other people who have shared this on social media in different places and seeing if there's any different in the blanking out. I will take some higher def photos and share them on my Twitter at Craftcasts, so you can have a look at these uh, that I've been sharing in this video here anyway. The final one is talking about uh, an organisational profile of Talon prepared by Gérard Lacroix who of course we've seen in the Retribution comic. He's talking about leaders. You can see Maximilian is already a known member of Talon or the Omnic that we've seen in the events of Masquerade. Um, as well as Viali and similar. Talking about Talon missions, what they're up to, assassination, arms trafficking, smuggling, legal substances and trade, and all kinds of things that are pretty nasty. But it then has an interesting section down here, paramilitary agents. It says, oh, an enforcer, an elite operative between the Talon operation appeared to blank, 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 particularly in close quarters. And then there's another bit blanked out. Like the enforcers, Talon's assassins possess enhanced speed, stealth and balance and have proven extremely elusive. Their movements are nearly impossible to track. Now, I believe that's referring to the assassin that we see and that you will have seen in the Overwatch uh, retribution trailer that the team are being called to take out the one that's jumping around really 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 quickly so yeah some interesting little bits in there kind of referring to things that are in the trailer but just a nice little extra thing for us to all enjoy so i'm glad that i got to share that with you I may have snuck under the radar a bit but a mercy statue has been unveiled i know this is nothing to do with retribution but just catching up on little bits of overwatch news as i've been it looks so so cool it is, I believe, retailing at 175 bucks, so I think that's a little bit more than the average statue, but not as expensive as our Lord and Saviour Diva when it comes to statues, her massive 500 bucks statue. Um, with all these statues for me, it's kind of like all or none, so I, at some point, I'm going to get a whole bunch of these and it's going to be glorious, but just right now, oh, I wish I could jump in and get it. Are you going to jump in and get this statue? Do you have a nice statue collection? Do you have the Diva statue? Let me live vicariously through you. Tell me how wonderful your diva statue is if you own that statue because that thing looks absolutely awesome. Okay, last but not least. Now, I got a really spontaneous and cool opportunity to do some talk about Overwatch lore and game and interactive storytelling with a host who I've admired the work of for quite some time on our channel whose work I absolutely love and watch myself. I'm actually going to be on Lore Masters with Ryan Green. I've watched that series myself. Really, really love it. It's a series on Geek and Sundry. You might be familiar with them on Twitch as a channel that do Dungeons and Dragons and role playing of different kinds. They've got loads of games going on. Critical Role, of course, uh, Dungeon Mastered and hosted a Dungeons and Dragons game by Matthew Mercer, who is, of course, the voice actor for McCree. And also a bunch of the guys on there do a bunch of voices for a lot of Blizzard games and things as well. So it was a really, really cool opportunity to go on Ryan Green's Lore Master show. We talked about Overwatch lore, story and Blizzard games in general, a whole bunch of other stuff as well. It was really, really fun. Now, at the moment, there's two ways you can watch it because it's actually already been on live. It was literally on the night that I was flying back from the UK. So sorry for no more notice on that. If you have a free Twitch Prime sub, for example, if you have Amazon Prime, then you can subscribe to Geek and Sundry, and the VOD is there right now, and you can go and have a look on their VODs on their Twitch channel and check it out. Or Geek and Sundry and Nerdist own this platform together called Alpha. You can get a free trial to that. Now, I don't think it's quite on there yet, but when it is on there, you can sign up for a free trial, and then you can just watch it there. And then, if you do want to, do have a look at Geek and Sundry and Nerdist's content. I enjoy Critical Role. There's a show called Shield of Tomorrow, lots of role-playing game shows, things about video games, and so much more pop culture and more besides so there's a lot of fun stuff to watch there if you do decide to lay a sub down all right that's me for this video thank you so so much to blizzard for having me out for this trip thanks to you guys for supporting the channel all over all this time um, without you and, and without the channel and your support i wouldn't have had this opportunity and the biggest thanks to my wiser half uh, without her support over these last couple of years i just wouldn't be here doing this kind of thing and being able to do this kind of thing for you so a huge thanks to her all right, there's all the latest Overwatch news and a little bit of news from me and an update from me for now, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like this video, please throw a like, subscribe, comment below. Are you excited for Blackwatch? I really, really want to know what you think of the reveals and things you've seen. Are you looking forward to next week's retribution? And let me know all of your theories and stuff in the comments. Cheers for tuning in. I've been Hammy. I'll catch you for the next video in a couple of days' time. Take it easy.